Okay, I'm going to talk about the top three mistakes algebra students make. Now, this applies pretty much to all math students, um, but I'm kind of uh, focusing what I see most frequently in algebra courses, and that would be uh, pre-algebra, algebra one, algebra two, college algebra, even pre-calculus and beyond. So I could even rename the title of this video, the top three mistakes math students make. But really, um, the focus is going to be on those that are, are uh, using algebra um, a lot in their in their work. Now, this comes from uh, many, many years experience as a, as a math teacher. And this is my opinion. Um, this is what I've seen. So there's no you know, absolutes here. Uh, I just want to pass on to you as a math teacher, the three trends, okay, three uh, mistakes uh, that are just mo that are really just are frequent and they hurt people's um, scores, okay, and they're kind of uh, a lot of them are going to be kind of simple to fix. So if you pay attention, uh, uh, you know, the whole idea is for me to share with you these mistakes so you have basically awareness about them so you don't make them, right? That's the whole idea behind the video. Before we get started, if you're new to my YouTube channel and you discover you like my um, teaching style, I literally have hundreds of other math videos on my channel, so hopefully you'll consider becoming a subscriber. If you do, hit that bell notification. I'm posting videos um, very, uh, very frequently, generally um, uh, once a day throughout the week. That's kind of like my goal. And basically, I'm doing uh, math uh, topics. So anyways, if you um, decide you want to learn more from me, this is the way to do it. Also, uh, if you are in need of a real comprehensive math course, um, I'll leave a link in the description or links in the description of this video on my Tablet Class Math Academy. These are my full comprehensive math courses that I really obviously teach you from you know, the beginning to the end. But with that being said, let's get into the top three mistakes algebra students make. All right, so the first one is positive and negative numbers. So let me explain what I'm talking about. If I give you this question here, negative two plus negative five, all of you would be like, yes, I can do this. This is no problem. Hopefully you can do this, right? <laughs> so this should be, your answer is negative seven. Now, if you if you didn't get this right, then obviously this is a, a big issue, okay? Positive negative number errors, and this is what we call real numbers, but let's just kind of just refer to them as positive negative numbers. This really just comes up all the time um, uh, in terms of getting, students getting the wrong answer. And so let me give you a little bit more um, practical sense of uh, how this comes up. So in algebra, you do you do a lot what we call evaluating. Evaluate. So what do I mean by that? Let's say I have, um, oh, let's let's say I have the quadratic equation. So x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So this is something that um, you would study in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. Right now, if you're not familiar with it, don't worry about it because um, you'll understand my point here. Basically, what you have to do is you have to plug in values to, uh, with uh, you're going to have to replace these variables okay, with values. That's what it means to evaluate. So A, for example, could be equal to negative 1, B could be equal to 2, and C could be equal to, let's say, negative 4. So you're going to end up plugging these guys in to where you see uh, the variable in this particular formula. right? But you do a lot of this in algebra. This is just one tiny example of evaluating. In other words, plugging in um, values, uh, uh, plugging in values for where there's variables at. Okay. So what ends up happening is students will make like simple little mistakes. Let me just, let's go ahead and actually just, uh, toy around with this, uh, particular, uh, e equation here. So X equals minus B. So that would be minus two plus or minus the square root of B squared. So this is two squared minus four times a is negative one times c is negative four all over two a that's going to be two times negative one okay so in here this particular formula so i'm not I, i'm not even going to go through this this whole thing i'm just going to tell you 
students confuse this. They'll, they'll end up turning this into um, the wrong value, okay? Because they're not focusing and, and taking their time working with these positive and negative numbers. This is even for those students who know the rules of positive and negative numbers. If I gave them a real basic pop quiz on how to add to uh, positive and negative numbers and subtract and divide and multiply, they can do that. However, when you are working with a lot of them, I'm going to tell you right now, and I'm sure most math teachers will agree, with student, if students make an error in their calculations, very often, okay, if they know what they're doing, they, they do a simple mistake, and it has to do with them not having the correct sign, okay, of their number, all right? So here, they'll be like, oh, that's negative, where it should, this should be positive, and they'll confuse things. So I'm just going to tell you right now, and the way to avoid this, okay, and this is going to relate to one of the other things we're going to talk about, is you're going to have to write neat, and you're going to have to be extremely focused. This is, goes above and beyond um, you knowing the, the absolute rules for positive and negative numbers. But I'm going to tell you right now, for sure, uh, when I'm grading the student's work, if they get something incorrect, I, w I would say like half the time, 50% of the time, it has to do with some making some sign mistake. In other words, they got the wrong sign because they just lost track of what's going on, not because they knew. And here is what, if I had a nickel for every time a student told me this, okay, and you, I'm, I'm sure you can relate to this, they would say, oh, I know, I know, I know. I knew this, I knew this, or I know this, I know this, I know this, I know this. They're like, yeah, 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 I got that. I just made this little mistake, but I knew that. I knew that, okay? <laughs> the, the math teachers hear that constantly. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I knew I knew that. Uh, I just made a little little mistake, but that was easy. I just got that wrong, you know, but I knew I, I should have known better, okay? Now, you could probably relate to it because if you looked at your work and your teacher gave you your your uh, work back and you're like, oh, yes, yeah, you know, uh, you're trying to argue for points, Student, math teachers don't care because it's the process, okay? So don't be one of those students that say, oh, I know this, okay? Because if you know this, then you need to demonstrate it, all right? Anyways, so when you are dealing with your um, a lot of calculations that involve positive and negative numbers, you need to be uh, on the lookout big time, okay? Because that's a high probability place for you to make a mistake. All right, so let's move on to our second thing. And that is everyone's favorite uh, topic, and that's fractions. Again, if I said, what's two-thirds divided by one-fifth, all of you out there should, hopefully would be able to do this problem, okay? Now, ex especially if you're in algebra, right? Now, if you can't do this problem, then you got, you, you got, you got some work to do, okay? But again, uh, there's a lot of fractions in algebra, right? There are a lot of numeric fractions, and there's a lot of variable fractions. And students, you know, they struggle finding how to uh, how to um, find the lowest common denominator. They just forget fractions. So why does this happen? Well, a lot of students will just go to the calculator, and they'll be like, oh, I'm going to just change these things to decimals, and I'm not even going to deal with fractions. You have to deal with fractions in algebra. So you got to be a master of fractions. Okay, so if I gave you something like this, two-thirds, well, let's say two-fifths minus uh, four-sevenths, okay, over negative one minus one-third, all right? This is a complex fraction. These things exist in algebra because, again, you can have some sort of situation where you're plugging in for variables, and now you have to simplify this, okay? I'm going to tell you right now, if I gave this quiz, let's say this particular prom, to an average class of 20 students, of 20 average Algebra 1 students, probably maybe 50% could get this uh, correct. <laughs> so, and, and I, I, you know, I'm kind of just throwing it out there, but I'm probably pretty certain a lot of people would mess this up because one, students forget how to deal with fractions and they uh, and also fractions here you're going to have a lot of positive and negative numbers to complicate you know what's going on so this kind of goes back to positive and negative numbers this is just working with number values integer values now you take this the issues we talked about here and throw in, throw this in with fractions and now you have a kind of a double whammy okay so you remember in algebra you're doing a lot of calculating you're replacing variables or you're 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 using numbers okay 
uh, positive negative number integer values and positive negative uh, fractions and decimals. But working with fractions is very, very common. And when some sort of fraction scenario comes up, a lot of students, they struggle with it. Okay. So for example, if I had, um, let's say two thirds X minus one fifth equals uh, two and one eighth. And I said, solve this equation. All right, this is another example where students might be, you know, weak with fractions and they'll make a mistake. And this is something very kind of elementary. So again, anytime fractions are involved, from my perspective as a teacher, seeing, you know, work, um, that's another high probability place for students to make errors. Okay. And again, I'm, I'm trying to uh, classify the three main areas where I really see um uh, mistakes. Now, there's other type of mistakes math students make in algebra for sure, and they're pretty frequent as well, but I'm really trying to highlight the biggest ones I see. Okay, so we have positive negative numbers and fractions. So just dealing with numbers, right? So let's move on to our last one. And this one is, I classified as, as steps and work. What do I mean by that? Well, basically, I mean that students, um, a lot of students, when they make a mistake in a problem, they're not showing all the steps involved in the problem. Okay, they have poor uh, um, habits in terms of how to write out their solutions. So let's take a problem like this, 2x minus 1 plus 10x equals negative 3x minus 7. Okay, now I'm not going to do this problem, but if I was to do this problem, there's a lot of steps that you need to show, okay? You need to show me, and I have a lot of, if you follow me uh, on my my channel, I speak, I really, you know, pound this a lot. I'm like, you got to show your work. You got to be nice and neat and structured. This is, this is the way you need to do math, okay? So when students skip these steps because they practice poorly or they're not paying attention to what their teacher is saying, um, their work, for example, is not neat. It's not organized. They're not showing all the steps of the process. If you do get the answer right, and you are correct. So, for example, let me just kind of say this. If you did this problem, and you show me one step, and you said x is equal to 5. Let's just say, I don't even know what the solution here is. But let's say you said x is equal to 5, and that was the correct answer. I would not give you credit for this uh, problem. Okay, Most teachers will not. You have to show your work for most math teachers to give you full credit because the work is a demonstration of your comprehension, your knowledge of the problem solving process. OK, so showing your work is critical. OK, it, it's one of the main things you can do to uh, increase the odds of you getting the problem correct. OK, showing all the steps, being neat and organized and structured, double checking as you go etc. Okay. So it's the, one of the main things you uh, can do to put the odds in your favor to get the solution correct. But at the same token, if you don't do it, not only are you likely to make an error, okay, because you're trying to do this math in your, in your head, even if you get the problem right, most teachers are not going to give you full credit or no credit for your solution because you haven't demonstrated this. Okay. So this is universal in math. It's a big, 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 big problem. Okay. Now, how do you avoid this? Well, you should be taking great notes in class and trying to basically you want to do math like your math teacher. All right. So hopefully you got a good math teacher and they're showing all the steps. They're demonstrating how to do the problem. You want to emulate them. You want to like copy them. You want to be thinking, how would you know if you were a math teacher, how would you show somebody how to do this problem if you were explaining it? Just explain it. Just think you're you're tutoring some, your your friend, you know, at school, and you're like, hey, here, uh, here, let me explain this prompt to you. You would show them this step. You would show them that step. Hopefully, you would, right? Because if you just went, oh yeah, here's the answer, they're gonna look at you like, uh, yeah, I still don't understand, <laughs> you know, right? So, oh, okay, let me show you uh, all the steps in detail. There's this. There's that. There's this. Then this and this. You get that? Oh, okay. Now I understand. That's the way you need to be thinking about when you do math problems, right? It's an absolute. That's basically non-negotiable point. As far as I'm concerned, as a math teacher, if I see students that don't show their work, all right. Let's say here. Let's just kind of do this real quick. You, you this is a, this is a general 
um, uh, track of math courses. So you start off with pre-algebra, generally then you go to algebra one, al uh, geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus, and calculus, okay? Uh, so for those of you who are gonna go and do this much math, this is a very common track. Now, some people could take statistics and other type of courses in here, but this is uh, uh, pretty common. For those students, and I've taught all these courses, now, for those students who start these bad habits, let's say in pre-algebra, they're like, oh, you know, they're, they're kind of making some mistakes. Algebra 1, they're still sticking with those bad habits of not showing their work. By the time they get to this level of math, okay, even over here, I mean, the math is becoming way more complicated. Uh, that involves a lot more steps. If they don't have those habits, they're going to really, really struggle, really struggle. And just forget about doing math at this level, like in passing. So, you know, if you're at this level, and I've tutored a lot at these levels, I used to have to go back and fix students' poor habits because they're not listening to their teacher, okay? I can guarantee you that your teacher or teacher somewhere along the path has emphasized uh, uh, this here, okay, showing your steps and works. But this is kind of the mindset um, of a math teacher, and I don't speak for all math teachers, I speak for myself, but believe me when I tell you, most of us, you know, are, you're going to, we're going to see these mistakes. Okay. So these are the top three areas that if you can focus on, all right, and improve in, you're going to like, like really, really improve your, um, your math scores for sure. So if you focus on, Hey, I'm, I got a lot of positive negative numbers here. Don't make any calculations, double check, go nice and neat, uh, nice and slow fractions, really slow it down. Make sure I'm doing uh, the things correctly. Then the only way to do this is really to show all your work step by step being neat and organized. All right, so let's just call this uh, video a wrap. Again, um, you know, if you like the way I teach, I uh, hope you become a subscriber make sure you hit that bell notification. I'm doing videos all the time, but my goal is for you to, uh, it's all about helping you, okay? So hopefully, you know, you trust what I'm saying, you know, and you apply it. That's the whole idea. If you got something out of this video, I would definitely appreciate a thumbs up. Leave me some feedback. It's the only way I um, know how I'm doing, and it gives me ideas on future videos I can make for you. And lastly, if you want to take my full comprehensive courses, I'll leave the link in the description of this video, and you can check out my Tabit Class Math Academy courses. But with that being said, I definitely appreciate your time, and have a great day.